Assalamu alaikum everyone this is Dr Manur Bangash welcome to my youtube channel hope you guys are doing well last two videos were about osmosis and osmotic potential whereas the topic of this video is osmotic pressure so let's get started or pressure is simply the sum of all the forces that are acting or sum of all the forces of different molecules that are striking a surface area at a given instant for example this is that surface area and these are the different molecules that will be striking this given surface area each of this molecule will be striking or hitting this area with a certain force and the sum of all these forces striking this surface area is called pressure so this means that greater the number of molecules greater will be force per unit area and greater will be the pressure osmotic pressure is defined as the pressure which is created by water moving across a semi permeable membrane the solute particles they cannot pass through the semi permeable membrane they are retained in the solution and the retention of these solute particles they will cause the movement of water across a semi permeable membrane which is osmosis so basically it is the solute that causes osmosis of water and osmosis of water will result in development of osmotic pressure this diagram here <clears throat> shows a u tube which is divided by a semi permeable membrane on one side of the tube on a side we have pure water and on b side we have a solution which means there are solute particles as well as water but the concentration of water is greater on b on a side as compared to b side of the tube the solute that is present in this solution on b side of this tube cannot pass through this semi permeable membrane and this will cause water molecules to move from a side of the tube towards the b side of the tube through this semi permeable membrane which is called osmosis and movement of this water from high water concentration towards the low water concentration will create a pressure which is called osmotic pressure so this shows that greater the solute particles here greater will be osmosis of water and higher will be the osmotic pressure that is developed this movement of water molecules across the semi permeable membrane will continue for some time but at this stage the concentration of water is still greater on a side as compared to b side and because of this movement of water the level of water on a side will fall and the level of solution on b side will rise and when we compare this change in level of the 
water here and this solution here then this height this height will give us the osmotic pressure that is developed due to the osmosis of water so after continuous osmosis of water from a towards b there will come a time when this solution on b side will be completely diluted and the number of water molecules on b side will become equal to number of mo water molecules on a side and that is when osmosis will stop so now that there are equal number of water molecules on both sides of this membrane so equal number of water molecules will be diffusing on both sides from b towards a and from a towards b which means that the net movement of water is zero and net movement of water means no osmosis the amount of osmotic pressure that is developed during osmosis can be calculated by Wenthoff's law and this is the Wenthoff's law which states that the osmotic pressure of solution is equal to the product of its temperature the ideal gas constant and the solute concentration Okay, pi in this equation is the osmotic pressure g is the number of total number of particles in solution c is the concentration of solute particles r is the ideal gas constant and t is the absolute temperature so according to this equation or this law pi which is the osmotic pressure is directly proportional to c which is the concentration of solute particles provided that the temperature is constant so this means that greater the concentration of solute that is retained in the solution that cannot cross the semi permeable membrane greater will be osmosis of water and greater will be the osmotic pressure that is developed due to osmosis so the second factor which <clears throat> affects the development of osmotic pressure is that your osmotic pressure is directly proportional to temperature provided that the concentration of solute particles is constant constant so this means that higher the temperature greater will be osmosis of water Uh, because with increase in temperature the kinetic energy of the molecules will increase so there are more chances of their movement which will increase osmosis and increased osmosis will result in increased osmotic pressure the okay, hypertonic solutions are those that have high osmotic pressure because they have high solute concentration whereas hypotonic solutions have low osmotic pressure because they have low solute concentration so on the basis of this the osmosis of water will occur from hypotonic solution towards hypertonic solution and this also shows that uh, osmosis of water will occur from solution with low osmotic pressure towards solution with high osmotic pressure okay so for example we have the same concentration of calcium chloride solution and sodium chloride solution when calcium chloride and sodium chloride when they dissolved in water they will dissociate into ions in case of calcium chloride we get one calcium and two chloride ions and in case of sodium chloride we'll get one sodium and one chloride ion okay so we know that 
when calcium chloride and sodium chloride are dissolved in water they will dissociate into ions in case of one mole of calcium chloride we'll get one calcium and two chloride ions and in case of one mole of sodium chloride we'll get one sodium and one chloride so in case of calcium chloride we get total three ions and in case of sodium chloride we get total two ions which means that in calcium chloride solution we'll have more concentration of solute and in case of sodium chloride we'll have less concentration of solute so this shows that when we compare the osmosis and os resulting osmotic pressure in these two solutions there will be greater osmosis and osmotic pressure of calcium chloride solution as compared to that of sodium chloride reflection coefficient is an index of effectiveness of solution in generating osmotic pressure to pull water across the cell membrane or number it's a number which describes the ease with which solute will permeate through the cell membrane this reflection coefficient is simply a number between 0 and 1 which describes us or which tells us how effective the solute particles are in causing osmosis and eventually creating osmotic pressure so if reflection coefficient of solute particle is 1 it means that it is completely impermeable it cannot pass through the semi permeable membrane as a result the solute will be retained and that retention of solute particles will cause water to flow from low solute concentration towards high solute concentration and the, that water flow will result in Uh, creation or of osmotic pressure example the uh, reflection coefficient of serum albumin is almost 1 which means that it is completely impermeable and it will create the highest osmotic pressure so if reflection coefficient of solute particles is 0 it means that it is completely permeable and the solute can easily pass through the cell membrane as a result there will be no water flow or osmosis and if there's no water flow then obviously no osmotic pressure will be created for example urea the reflection coefficient of urea is 0 which means that it will not cause osmosis and will not exert any osmotic pressure so we've already discussed the osmotic pressure there is another term which is called effective osmotic pressure it is the portion of the total osmotic pressure of solute which determines the tendency of solvent to pass through the semi permeable membrane we know that osmotic pressure is developed by or created by the movement of water across the semi permeable membrane so this effective osmotic pressure is part of that osmotic pressure which will uh, determine how effectively the solvent or water is moving to create osmotic pressure effective osmotic pressure can be calculated by simply multiplying osmotic pressure with reflection coefficient and when we add the formula of uh, osmotic pressure this is what we get and we know that reflection coefficient is between two numbers that is 0 and 1 Okay, from this formula we know that effective osmotic pressure is directly proportional to osmotic pressure 
So if reflection coefficient is 1, it means that solute is completely impermeable. It cannot pass through the semi-permeable membrane and as a result, greater or higher osmosis will occur and that means higher osmotic pressure will be developed and higher osmotic pressure means high effective osmotic pressure. Whereas uh, zero reflect, reflection coefficient means that the solute particles are completely permeable. They will pass through the semi-permeable membrane. As a result, no osmosis will occur. When there is no osmosis, obviously no osmotic pressure will be created. As a result, there will be no effective osmotic pressure so this was all about osmotic pressure please don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe my channel thank you for that and take care